and welcome to From Eels to Estuaries Virtual Learning with Curve. My name is Elle and today I'm here to talk about the oyster, an incredible little creature who plays a very important role in the Hudson River. We'll be discussing the anatomy or physical makeup of the oyster in detail today. But first, we'll be exploring the historical significance of oysters to the Hudson River. Yonkers is located on colonized land. This means that the people who occupy this area now are no longer those who originally made their homes there. The Lenni Lenape are indigenous people who raised their families and built their communities on this land far before European colonizers, in this case the Dutch, claimed it for themselves and forced the Lenni Lenape out. It is very important that we recognize this complicated piece of Yonkers' history while also acknowledging this indigenous community and the lasting impact of their presence in New York. Lene Lenape literally means men of men, but is translated to original people. Before they were forced to migrate to the Midwestern United States and Canada, the Lene Lenape lived in New Jersey, Delaware, southern New York, and eastern Pennsylvania. The Lene Lenape who lived close to the Hudson River were likely the first to discover and utilize its incredible oyster population. Oysters were an important food source for the Lene Lenape, and this is a known fact because of the shells that were left behind. The Lene Lenape people created large piles of oyster shells that can be found scattered throughout New York. They were discovered buried underground as well as piled high on land. Archaeologists call them shell middens, and the shell piles were often up to four feet deep. These piles of shells prove that the New York tradition of oyster consumption is one that began within these indigenous communities. When colonizers paved Pearl Street and Lower Manhattan, they actually used crushed oyster shells in its construction. Although Manhattan experienced a major transformation after indigenous people were forced out and European colonizers began to turn the area into the bustling city we know today, oysters have remained culturally significant. Oysters are mollusks, which means they are invertebrate or spineless animals with soft bodies and no legs. Some mollusks, such as octopus and squid, have tentacles. These creatures can use their tentacles for movement and can grasp things, much like an arm. But oysters lack this feature. They have a soft and delicate body, which makes them vulnerable to predators. But their tough shells act like an armor and offer them protection. Sometimes, while at the beach, you might see a gull pluck an oyster out of the water, fly high into the air, then drop the oyster on the ground or another hard surface, like a large rock. The gull is doing this to break the oyster's shell so it can eat what is inside. Oysters don't like to move around too much. Ideally, they find a place where they can safely attach themselves in an area where they have enough phytoplankton and zooplankton to eat early on in their lives. During their first few weeks of life, oyster larvae utilize an appendage that they grow called a foot. This foot helps them crawl around to find a suitable surface to attach to. Usually, this surface is the shell of another oyster. Once the oyster has found the place it wants to stay, it adheres itself to that spot by secreting a kind of natural glue that will keep them there. So what makes the oyster so special? I know it might not seem like they can do much. To better understand their abilities, let's take a closer look at the oyster. Here I have some shells that have come from the East Coast. Oysters are bivalves, meaning they have two shells. This sets them apart from other mollusks, such as slipper snails and whelks, who are univalves, or creatures who have only one shell. These here are all oyster shells. This is the biggest one that I have. And this is a slipper snail shell. You might have seen a lot of these at the beach. I always do. And this is a conch shell, which are what whelks live in. It's the top, and here's the underside. Oysters are unique from other bivalves because their shells are asymmetrical, which means that each side is a little different. One shell is flatter while the other is more cupped. Creatures like mussels and clams have shells that are identical on both sides. This is a mussel shell. And this is a clam shell. 
There were once oysters who lived inside these shells. And I'll be using a diagram to show you what the different parts of those oysters were and what they did. These are the palps. Palps remove inedible material from the food tracts of the gills. And here it is important to note that the oyster's digestive system is a surprisingly unique one. The material that the palps get rid of is called pseudofeces or fake poop. The food that passes through the oyster's palps is processed by its body in a way that is surprisingly similar to the human digestive process. This is the mantle. The mantle is a fleshy layer of tissue which surrounds the oyster's body and ensures the formation and development of the oyster shell. It also contributes to the production of the mother of pearl lining inside the shell. These are the gills. They play a crucial role in respiration as well as feeding. Scylla are hair-like structures present on the gills which generate water currents to transport the food particles the oyster feeds on. This is the adductor muscle. It keeps the opening of the oyster shut. You can actually see the adductor muscle scar on the inside of an oyster shell if you look closely. Of all the oyster shells I have, this one has probably the most prominent scar, which is this mark right here. This is the cerebral ganglion, and it serves as the oyster's brain. This next part of the oyster isn't actually included in the diagram, but I can show it to you myself on a real oyster. This is the hinge of the shell. And this one is here as well. An easy way to find out if an oyster you found is alive would be to press down on the hinge to see if the shell's opened or not. If not, the oyster is probably still alive in there. Those were the most unique parts of the oyster. Some of the other parts, such as the heart and the stomach have functions that you probably are already familiar with. One particularly remarkable fact about oysters is the fact that they act as natural water filters. Each oyster clears suspended particles out of 30 to 50 gallons of water a day. This means that they have a very positive effect on their marine environment, and without them, water quality goes down. In the following video, you can see how effectively a tank full of mature oysters can clean water from the Severn River in Annapolis, Maryland in only five hours. has been historically famous for its oysters. Before the 20th century, oysters were fished and eaten in abundance by New Yorkers, and it was widely believed that New York oysters were some of the best in the world. But by the 1920s, burdened by over-harvesting, sewage pollution, and landfill, the oyster population declined, and those who were left were not safe to eat. But today, New York oysters are finally making a comeback which has mostly come about because of organizations like the Billion Oyster Project. The Billion Oyster Project is an organization which collects oyster shells from restaurants, then dries them and brings them to the hatchery at the Urban Assembly New York Harbor School, where students place the shells in tanks of oyster larvae. The young oysters attach to these shells and live on them. With at least five young oysters clustered to one restaurant shell, they are eventually placed in the New York Harbor. Not only are these oysters clearing the water, they're also repairing the damaged harbor. Because oysters cluster in sturdy groups, they create natural breakwaters and protect land from surrounding water. With the oyster population making a comeback, the animals who rely on them as a food source, such as the oyster toadfish, are thriving as well now that the missing link in their food chain has been restored. Oysters also create habitats that are vital to the survival of many animals. As you can see when looking at this cluster of shells, oysters stick together and create structures that make excellent habitats for other creatures. The skillet fish, for instance, relies heavily on oyster reefs for survival. When oysters started disappearing from the Hudson, so did the skillet fish. But now they've begun to make a comeback as well. Here's a closer look at the shells. So there were once three oysters living together here. 
Now I know what some of you might be thinking. Oysters do so many amazing things, but what about pearls? What about pearl production? Well, not all oysters make pearls, and our oysters are the kind that don't. The oysters in the New York area, which are eastern oysters, don't actually make pearls. Some pearl-producing oysters include the gold-lipped pearl oyster and the silver-lipped pearl oyster, and they live in the Indian Ocean and the Pacific, from Japan to Australia, and they produce pearls known as South Sea pearls. Now I'm quickly going to show you how to do a short activity called shell rubbing. For this activity, all you'll need is a piece of paper and a pencil and a shell. I'm actually going to be using a clam shell for this activity. You can see, because it's a little bit flatter, it still has some grooves, but you're going to want to put the paper on top of the shell and then take your pencil and sort of lightly drag it across the paper to pick up the grooves within the shell on the paper. Um, you're going to want to use one more like this rather than like this because the sort of larger divots make it difficult to get a good impression. So here's my clam shell. And I'm going to just kind of press the paper down. So as you can see, here are some of the grooves, just this area here. At first glance, oysters seem like creatures who aren't capable of doing much, but in actuality, they do a lot of good for both people and other animals. Thank you so much for joining me. I hope you've learned never to underestimate the power of an oyster. Goodbye for now.